So we just thank God for being amazing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, anyway, let's do this message. And we still on this series. Look at somebody say, when the devil hurts you. Don't blame God. Amen. When the devil hurts you, don't blame God. I get tired of hearing folks say, see, the reason I don't go to church, because, man, no, that's not why you don't go. Everybody in church corrupt. or Everybody everywhere is corrupt. Shut up. That's not why you don't go. You don't go because you don't want God. Amen. You don't want accountability to God. See, man, that's why, man, all the church. You ain't been to all the churches. You're blaming God for something that happened to you. Something that happened to you, you're blaming God. But you don't do that in any other avenue of your life. You don't stop going to Walmart because somebody at Walmart did you wrong. You don't stop going to the donut shack because they gave you a cruller instead of a glazed. You don't stop going to the bank because somebody at the bank cussed at you. You don't stop riding a bike just because you fell off of it. So why when it comes to the church, you're done with the church and everything that has to do with the church because something happened to you? Amen. When the devil hurts you, don't blame God. Okay, let's get into this. The main objective of the devil is to stop you. We talked about that last, last week, right? The devil's main objective is to what? He's, that's, that's all he's trying to do. Stop you. And sometimes that encourages me. It encourages me to know that, man, this is the devil trying to stop me. So that means I got to do what? Keep. Amen. The objective of the devil is to stop you. Furthermore, he wants to stop what is strengthening you. So if he stops you, or in order to stop you, he wants to stop what's strengthening you and growing you, which is what? The church. So to stop you, he want to stop you from coming to church. First Timothy 3 and 15, but if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Y'all, now look. Don't you let, see, because you got to understand, people make money now off internet views. So they, somebody that's never been called to lead nobody can start a movement online without a calling and get paid. If you're truly called by God, people are going to follow you. If God has called you to pastor, there are sheep that he needs you to lead. But if he haven't called you and you've tried and tried and nobody will follow you, you can get online and get a following. That's why the folks online are anti-church. Why would you be for church if you can't profit from church? Why would you be for church if you never could start successfully lead a church? So you want the church to die and gain a presence, a virtual presence. You know what virtual means? That means it's not really a presence. It's ones and zeros. So I'm very leery of someone that failed at gaining a following, a human following. But they're successful at gaining a digital following. Because the Bible didn't make an allowance for that. The Bible says that, uh, uh, that thou mayest know how thou hast to behave thyself in the what? 
He's not talking about your body. Well, we are the house of, no, you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. But right here, he's talking about the house of God, which is a physical building church where people are gathered. I ain't talking about the design of the church and it don't have to have a steeple and a sharp front and all that. No, but just a gathering, wherever that gathering of people is under a shepherd, that is the house of God. And he says it is the church of not the dead God. It ain't no Buddhist temple. It's the church of the... We right now are in the church of the living God. Anybody that discounts it is a demon. You're discounting the church because as long as God is living, the church is his. The church of the what? The church of the who? And then this is the part right here. Oh my gosh. The pillar and ground. So he describes the church of the living God as the pillar and ground. So I don't want to hear your truth if it isn't resting on the ground of the church. I don't want to hear your truth if the pillars of the church aren't holding it up. That's what, see these, these are pillars. See these things right here. These are pillars and they hold it up. They uphold the building. So the church upholds the truth. And it is the grounds of the truth. You can't discount it. Don't be dogging it out because you don't like yours. Don't be dogging it out because yours shut down. Don't be dogging it out because you got mad at somebody in yours. It's the pillar and ground of the truth. Well, what about all these old corrupt preachers? They out here doing it. What about them? I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the church of the living God. Where the truth is upheld by the pillars. Jesus came to be the example of living for us all. Y'all believe that? And die to save us all. He is the most powerful being to ever live on earth. Y'all believe that? The most powerful being to ever live on earth. Matthew 28 and 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, All power is given unto me in heaven. And I told you I was going to read this every week. Because he's the most powerful being. I'm happy about that. You're not happy about that? He's the most powerful being. So, he's the most powerful being that ever lived on earth. He had all power while he lived on earth. And he had all power once he was risen from the earth. Amen? Amen. This powerful being, Jesus Christ, spoke something powerful in the earth. He said that upon himself, which was Peter's declaration of who he was. Remember, thou art the Christ. He would build his church. So upon who he was, he would build his church and nothing would stop it. Including the gates of hell. He specifically named and called out the devil and said, this is the one thing I'm leaving here that you won't be able to stop. My church. Anybody a part of the Lord's church? Amen. Well, pastor, but the church can be. Leave. Just leave because we're a real physical church. Yeah, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. But these scriptures, when he said the gates of hell shall not prevail, he was talking about the physical church building, man. Oh, but it ain't about the building. Sometimes it is. It's about the building if it get hot in it. It's about that AC. We need somebody to fix the building. You just a brother. See, the problem is church. These folks are church hurt. And they hate the church. So they'll go get some stupid doctrine that excludes the church. As if we just come into church as a formality. We don't come to church as a formality. 
we believe something is happening in the gathering of the saints. We believe that this is the will of God for us and our families. There be folks that met their wives and husbands in church. How are you against the church? You wouldn't have had nobody. You went to the laundromat every week and didn't nobody holler at you. You was at the mall, you was at, you was everywhere. Nobody, you went to the football game. It was 90,000 people. Didn't nobody ask for your phone number. You came to church and God was merciful to you. He had mercy on you. Well, let me go on and throw something they way since they so jive and trifling. Let the church give them something. And now you got an attitude about God's church? Matthew 16 and 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall what? The gates of hell shall try. They show try. Somebody was telling me the other day a children's choir got up to sing and the children had mask on. How you singing with mask on? Children? That's child abuse. CPS need to shut that church down. They are the gates of hell trying to prevail, trying to make folks scared. Now what them kids gonna grow up and think? There's no faith in here. And the gates of hell shall what? Not prevail. Not prevail. Man, I know I'm preaching. Amen. Amen. The devil knows he cannot stop God's true church. You don't think he knows that? He knows it because Jesus said he couldn't. So what he's trying to do, he created a lot of false churches, self-proclaimed pastors with selfish motives, and then carnal members that would desire fables Rather than the truth. It's the carnal members that's heaping upon themselves the jive turkey pastors. Amen. Don't be, don't, man, these pastors, no, nah, these people. That's what the people want. Give the people what they want. That's what they want. They flock to that. The Bible said in 2 Timothy 4 and 4, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth. You got folks like that in your family. Amen. Turn away, turn their ears away. Don't want to hear it. And they shall be turned unto fables. Folks send me some of the stuff these preachers be saying and doing. I'm like, man. And you know, folks always say, you know, man, dude, he better quit that. He just going to drop dead. No, he's not. He gonna keep on living because the people want that. Yeah. He's doing what, what the market is calling for. Yeah. Yes, sir. Foolishness. Yeah. The devil uses people in church to hurt others. Y'all, anybody been hurt by somebody in church? Yeah, so that qualifies as church hurt. Well, why you still come? Because you know it ain't about that. I'm not letting church hurt stop me from God's church. If it's God's church, if it's the church of the living God and the pillar and ground of the truth, why am I worried about some trifling Negro? Some trifling woman. Somebody with a bad attitude. Oh, that usher took my gum. I ain't ever going back to church. Something wrong with these churches. Won't let you chew gum. Is that all it took for somebody to take your gun? You hate church. You couldn't have grew up like we did. They, they pull it out your mouth mid smack. You just be chewing it. Usher looking at you like, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna tell your dad. <laughs> they couldn't grow up like we did, Deshaun. We got called up to the stage. Oh, who did that? Craig did what? And this is my daddy preaching. Craig, Craig did what? Craig! In the middle of the sermon. I'm clinging under the pew like one of them little monkeys. Just 
Please don't look under this pew. <laughs> yeah, we got, remember that? We got called out. Yeah, they were there was acting a fool, playing around, and his daddy made them get up and sing. Just like Joe Clark. Sing the anthem. Sing the black national anthem. <laughs> if you miss one sentence. Sing a song full of the da, da, da. <laughs> I have to take a beat because that song is scary and dreary. But yeah, you remember that? He called them up and made them sing. Yeah. So you could, man, we wasn't church hurt behind that. We still in church. Because we knew that was a personality. My dad had a personality that God was using for the kingdom. But he was still a man who had a bad son that had to get rebuked publicly. He beat me at home and it wasn't working. And I understand that has nothing to do with the presence of the Lord in the building. The devil uses people in, in churches to hurt others. Some are hurt to the point of not only leaving the church, but form anti-church doctrines against Jesus' very words. Anti-church doctrine to try to say that we shouldn't be gathering. Why would you gather and listen to a man? Well, who is God speaking through? Y'all listening to the words of a man. He ain't nothing but a man. Well, what you reading? Who wrote what you reading? You reading the Bible. Who wrote the Bible? Men. Were they perfect men? Some of them were very flawed and wrote the Bible because God uses men. Man has dominion on earth, so God speaks and you speaks through and uses men. Here's the crazy thing. Is God guide you and your family? Are you a man? Probably not. That's why you feel that way. Because your wife is running your house. Yeah, God uses men. Amen. 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 Matthew 11 and 6 says, And blessed, which is happy, this is the amplified, happy, fortunate, and to be envied, is he who takes no offense at me, says Jesus, and finds no cause for stumbling in or through me, and is not hindered from seeing the truth. Amen. That's the blessed man that don't find a reason to not go to church. Don't find a reason. Don't have an offense with him that causes them to stumble. That's the blessed man. And if you let people stop you from church, your eyes are on people. And if your eyes are on people, that means there's envy in your heart. Envy and jealousy making you eye people. Can I preach in here? I, I know. I'm preaching. Oh, God. People have started emotional movements that draw others away from true fellowship and into their hurt and pain that believers have caused them. Emotional movements. That's New Age theology emotional how you feel man I'm so glad I don't base my life on how I'm feeling amen, amen. this morning I woke up and wish I had an assistant pastor <laughs> when I was growing up the assistant pastor is the one you called and say look bro I ain't coming today so I need you to do everything I would have done <laughs> and this morning I woke up I was tired because that jet lag, that two hours, man, it's, it's okay when you're going. But when you're coming back, you miss, the, you miss those hours. So I was tired. 
So I don't base it on how I felt because I know I got to go and I got to preach the gospel. No matter how I feel, it's my responsibility. Amen. You work a job, you know. You wake up that morning. You can only say you got COVID. Of, of <laughs> Man, this COVID is helping us. I tested positive. Yes, I test positive, so I won't be in. Yes. But you know, as a man, you got to go to work. Amen. If you're a single mother or you taking care of your, you know you got to go to work. If you got a job. Amen. So you can't base it on how you feel. But people have started these feeling ministries. The feelings. How people feel. And the Bible said they would do that because that would take advantage of women. These are the sorts that creep into the houses of silly women. Laden with lust. Yeah, ever learning, never coming to the knowledge of the truth. The Bible told you what the end times would be like right then. It's going to be, everything's going to be catered toward women. That's why the new Black Panther is, and there's no Panther. It's just black. Bunch of black women. Yeah, the man ain't in it. They taking the man out of everything. Viola Davis got a movie, the, the, the Lion Queen. What is it called? The Woman King. Oh, that's worse than I thought. The Woman King. Viola, go sit down somewhere. Viola. You know you ain't good at nothing but crying and snot. <laughs> Titus wanted to. You know, my filter starts diminishing as I don't get rest. Let me hurry through this mess. <laughs> but yeah, they're trying to take the men out of everything because they know in this time that Jezebel spirit is going to usher us into the end of all things. The Jezebel spirit has ended every, every prominent culture that has ever existed has fallen to Jezebel amen and the church is no different they're trying to destroy the church with the Jezebel spirit so they're starting these emotional movements Titus tells us about it Titus 1 and 10 for there are many unruly you know what unruly means you have no rule there's nobody over you you know, Earl Carter told me something a little while ago, and he said, man, every man needs somebody in their life that can tell them, don't do that. Yeah. He said, if you don't have anybody in your life that can say, bro, don't do that. Yeah, no, man. Every man needs somebody to call them to the carpet. Amen. That's why church is a good place for that. Because you have authority in church. You can run stuff by. You make relationships in church. Amen. These dudes that stay online by themselves, they ain't answering to nobody. They experiment. And that's why everything they say and do keeps changing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I thought you believed this. Well, no, now I believe this. Yeah. Yeah. Because unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, the Bible said there are many in the church. Whose mouths must be what? Must be stopped. Because they subvert whole houses. Teaching things which they ought not for views and likes. Filthy lucre. Black Hebrews. I said black Hebrews. In here, I'm, do I have your attention? You came back after last week. You're crazy. The black Hebrews, New Agers, Gnostics, and inclusion doctrines were all established because people did not like how God governs his church. Yeah, they all came from church. 
They all came out of church. I mean, all the way back. If you go back, even with the New Age, go back to the Gnostics. Thomas, doubting Thomas was right with Jesus. And that's who Gnostics use, his book, the book of Thomas. That is his old stuff. Inclusion? Inclusion doctrine. It's very old. But these are people that didn't like the way the church was governed. Most of the time, it's people that couldn't move up in church. Yeah. Hey, brother said, yeah, man, see, church, man, see, you know, I never got my opportunity. And, man, he said, brother, you can't preach. I've heard you. You're awful. How you going to say that? Because I'm going to say that. Stop doing it. Just do the prayer of salvation. Why you got to have a mic and an organ? If God called you to preach, man, he going to give you somewhere to preach. He's not going to give you vision without provision. But I feel like that place is at your church. <laughs> Brother, that's not provision. I mean, we have a certain way we do things. We've been doing it, certain order, whatever. And if God wants you to speak in here, you will speak in here. But it hadn't happened yet. Well... Uh, can I preach in here? That's how they think. So let me go online and start my own ministry because the church be tripping. <laughs> Brother, no, it don't work that way. And just because you call to preach don't mean you're supposed to be preaching in church. Folk is unsaved on your street. You went to the family reunion and didn't help nobody. All you ate was barbecue. You ate barbecue the whole time. You couldn't preach because you was eating links and brisket the whole. That was your opportunity. All of them unsaved. You dancing with them. With the big red. <laughs> they need to quit selling big red. Do they still sell big red? Have you ever noticed if, it's re if a big red is real cold, it will burn your throat? Now that burn ought to, <laughs> that ought to be the sign. Wait a minute. Why is my throat on fire? You feel like you got throat cancer. If it's cold, that's that dye in there. Burning your throat. Trying to tell you. <laughs> Choose another option. But we'll force it down because it's a family. <laughs> then the barbecue sauce is as sweet as the Big Red. Then some of them pour the Big Red in the barbecue sauce. <laughs> is this a family reunion or the Last Supper? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> but yeah, these movements are all false. The Gnostics, New Age, Black Hebrews, they're all false. Look at somebody say, they're all false. Oh. Now, who didn't say it? <laughs> if your neighbor didn't say it, let's say it again. Say, they're all false. They're all false. <laughs> Look at the other neighbor and say, Black Hebrews, yeah. New Ages, yeah. Gnostics, yeah. Inclusion, yeah. they're all false. Oh. I love it. I love it. Well, I'm gonna have a Hebrew Israelite go. He just go. <laughs> you ain't hiding in here. <laughs> All of these movements are false according to Scripture, not because G. Craig said it, but according to Scripture. Amen. Amen. The Bible said God had no respect to persons. So how are you just an elite Negro? But they're all false. First Timothy 4 and 1. Now the Spirit is speaketh expressly that in the latter times, y'all believe this is the latter times? Yeah. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to what? Seducing. See, that seducing spirit, that's that feeling. 
because you feel bad and somebody hurt you or you, you know, something was wrong and it drew you by your feelings and now you've changed everything you used to believe because you gave heed to a seducing spirit and doctrines of devils. The doctrine of devils. You once believed it and now, what, now it's false to you because of a YouTube channel. You saw a video that said that Pharaoh was your great, great uncle. And you have changed everything. Now, that's a seducing spirit. Self-governing is do what thou wilt. New Age doctrine that causes men to create their own rules. That's the law of the Lima by Alistair Crowley. Ma uh, 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 Blavatsky, what's her name? Madam Blavatsky, Alice Bailey, all of those folks, uh, L. Ron Hubbard, all of them, the Christian sign, everything. It's do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. That's the law of the Lima. They believe do whatever you want. Because God is not going to judge your flesh. He's going to judge your spirit. So as long as your spirit is good and belongs to God, your flesh can sin and not even affect anything. That's the law of the Lima. So this keeps them from having to follow the leadership and authority of men of God. I want God to temper my flesh. I don't want to have a bunch of kids out of wedlock. I want to get diseases. I don't want to get, I don't want to, I need God to temper my flesh. I don't want to get drunk and drive into a, a, a bank or something. I, I, crash my car. I need God to temper my flesh. I don't want to eat myself into a sugar diabetes coma. I need the Holy Ghost to knock that rib out of my head. I need my flesh tempered. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Can I keep preaching in here? But this keeps them. This self-governing do what thou will. It keeps them from having to follow God, the leadership and authority of men of God. 1 Corinthians 14 and 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of what? Peace. If there's a bunch of sin, there's confusion. Yeah. Don't sin lead to confusion. Yes. But God is not the author. He's author of peace. As in what? Is he talking about your body? No. As in all churches of the saints. He's the author of peace in all the churches of the saints. God uses men to govern his churches. No matter what the world does, God's way will never change. Amen. Amen. You ain't going to walk in no church. Who's the pastor? Oh, there is no pastor. That's not God's church. Who's overseeing what's going on in here? Every man just does what's good in their own eyesight. <laughs> this is a cauldron. Y'all some witches in here. This is a witch gathering. And even the witches call on a higher power. So God's going to use me. So you might as well get over it. And Amen. If you mad at men, forgive them. Because God's going to use one. You mad at your daddy, forgive him. Because you're going to be under a pastor. And however you feel about your daddy, you're going to take out on that pastor. Amen. And you're going to be mad at God when it's the devil that hurts you. Can I keep preaching in here? I know I'm preaching. Let it, look at somebody and say, let it go. Let it go. 
Let it go. Don't you let it drive you downtown and you got felt on talking about the oh, the, the, the lost books. We the lost ones. We the lost chosen ones. We the, well, we always lost. I ain't lost. I have an address. You lost because you downtown. Don't you let it drive you to that. Ephesians 4 and 11. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. This was God's doing. He left it for the perfecting of the saints. The church of the living God. The pillar and ground of the truth. I don't have nowhere to go. Ain't no good church in my town. Well, you better pray to God to find somewhere. Amen. 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 You ain't been everywhere. And maybe God don't want you at no church until you get your heart right. Every church I go to, some junk jump off. Maybe you're the junk. Quit jumping off. Amen. I spent seven years out of the institutional church at home passing out these messages to my family and us sitting around the dinner table and me preaching just like I'm preaching right now. I spent that time because God had me preparing for this time, but I never lost my desire for fellowship. I never lost. I never start preaching against the church. Because I knew God was preparing me for the church. I've never gone to a town and set up in a convention center and just put the invitation out and let people gather. I've never done that. Every time I've gone to speak, I've contacted churches so that pastors could bring their members so that they could be strengthened by the word and it could help their fellowship. Summary! This is a good message, man. The devil loves to hurt us through God's leaders and believing guardians because the wound is deeper and more potent than when non-believers offend us. When you get hurt in church, yeah, the wounds are deeper. Many times because you put your trust you put not only your human trust, but you put your spiritual trust in it. And so, yeah, it's a deeper wound. So when believers hurt us, it can set us up for a life full of cantankerousness and seditious behavior toward God leaders, God's leaders, and the church as a whole. Get to the point where folks, men to the church, you out. Oh, man, nah, I don't go to no church. Now, I love the Lord now, and I worship the Lord. You know, me and the Lord, we good. I ain't fooling with no church. Then you and the Lord ain't good. Because you ain't fooling with what God left. The church is his. It's the church of the living God. That same guy you talking about you good with? He ain't had no conversation with you about the church? Y'all have a one-sided relationship. But when believers hurt us, it can set us up for a life of that. They essentially blame God for the hurt that people have caused them. So in turn, they fight against his presence in earthly authorities that he is working through. So because you're blaming the church for what happened to you, now you're blaming authorities and you can't hear God speak through them. And some things you won't hear unless it comes through a godly authority. No, oh, brother, no, man. See, I'm on my own personal path most. My own personal island of Patmos. I just be listening. I be hearing God. I just be listening. It be just angels going back and forth. They be bringing stuff. Just bringing little books and scrolls back and forth. I hear it all the time. I just, brother, you're a weirdo. You are a weirdo. And your doctrine is stupid. I was visited by this angel and he brought me a little book. And he said, eat. And he put it in my mouth. <laughs> brother, that was the Keebler commercial. That was a little snack he put in you. 
stuff y'all I get you people have told me that it's like man do you know you're going crazy you are cracking up you're going crazy you're spending all that time by yourself no governing nobody to balance you just you and your feelings that's why I don't like this you know William Murphy and all them kind of dudes oh I'll call his name all for abortion and all that old kind of junk. But you know what's wrong with them? See, they don't like church doctrine. They all believe in inclusion or Gnosticism, all these famous folks. They believe in that because they want to live the lifestyle that they're living and still claim Christ. But what really happened to them was they were church hurt. They're church hurt because they elected to only go to church for money. So you've been playing for a church all your life. You've been a worship leader all your life. So you have to go to the elite churches to get the elite money, right? And most of those churches was corrupt. So you got church hurt because you decided to go to church for money. Instead of going where God told you to go, where you could lead your family, where truth was, you decided to go get paid. I was playing for three churches. Sending my wife to another church where I was a youth pastor. I'm playing for all these churches, making all this money. And God spoke to me and said, what are you doing? I said, I'm taking care of my family. He said, no, you're not. You're destroying your family. He said, quit all them jobs and be at church with your family. And trust me. And I came and told my, remember, I had to come and tell her that. I'm sorry. Can't be sending you off to a church and then I'm at all these other churches for the money. Because then when something goes down, I'm going to be church hurt. Yeah. Then I'm going to hate all church. Yes, sir. Can you imagine me preaching church hurt? It's crazy. Yeah. But when believers hurt us, it sets us up for this life. So they begin to blame God for the hurt that people have caused them. Understand, most of the time the hurt you got was because of your decision. God told you to leave that church and you didn't. And so you got hurt. And that's okay. Pick up the pieces and move on. In Jesus' name. Yeah, Lord, I blew that. Yeah, I made a bad decision there. But I got to let that go because that's that church. That's your church. That's your problem, Lord, not mine. This causes people to read the Bible and study God with impure motives and agendas. Yeah. Then you start reading old weird stuff into the scripture. Yeah. Well, in the Old Testament, God just saw he only liked the Jews. He only liked the blacks. The, the, the Jews is the blacks. The Jews. Well, then what color was the people that enslaved them in Egypt? Well, they, they was black too, but they was a different shade. Brother, you... Okay, then what about the New Testament? Where Paul said it don't matter. We all the same blood. Well, see, now, now Paul, now, you know, we can't, now, now Paul's just a man. <laughs> what was Jacob? What was Abraham? Where everybody came from. What was Adam? Was he a man? <laughs> see, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing! You mad! You're mad at somebody. You're angry. Somebody hurt you, brother. You ain't finna sit up here and put that anger in you. You're not gonna put it in me. I'm not gonna let you put that in my heart. Are you crazy? Now, some of y'all, I get it. They call you, they can put that anger they got, they can put it right in your heart, and then you up out of here with them. 
I get that, but not me. Man, I'm a seasoned saint. I'm a seasoned believer. I know the truth of the word. I know when it's the devil, and I know when it's God. And I'm not hanging around nobody that keeps trying to put it in me. Dude, that little biscuit that that angel fed you, you ain't eating that. My mouth just keeps up. Uh, 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 uh. You put that in my mouth. <laughs> Get that Trisket out of here. Bro, I ain't eating that. Man, that's your anger. You're mad, not me. But I'm happy in Jesus Christ. I'm good with Paul. I'm good with his writings. I preach them. I'm good with everything he wrote. When you do this, though, you begin to pick and choose which parts of the Bible are for you and which parts are not. That's when Houston, we have a problem. See, what, what Paul wrote, you know, I know, see, I'm out here, I'm a woman pastor, and then, you know, but I know, I know what Paul said. No, you don't know what Paul said. Yes, I do, I know what he said, but that was Paul. They, that was his, that was Paul. So you don't preach nothing he said? Well, I preach the things that he said, but some of the things that he said, which things? Like, how do you know? Aren't we supposed to believe it all and not change any of it? Then sit down. You ain't supposed to be pastoring. The Bible says stop it. Amen. This is how false doctrines and the great falling away begins. People fall away from the truth because of their offenses and hatred of God's people. The saddest part is that it was the devil all along working through people's childhood trauma and disappointments to cause them to have a fault-finding disposition to begin with. Something was already wrong with you before you got in church. That's why your church hurt ran so deep because there was already a deeply rooted problem. Then when a minister or church goer lets them down, it's, do it's down with the whole church and then enter the self-governing doctrine. They start bonding with others and start whole movements that appear to have God, but without his forgiveness. Now, how do you have God without forgiveness? How do you love everybody that's your color but hate the folks that's not your color? So you're trying to have a move of God without his forgiveness. They claim they are gods, but they hate their neighbors. Yeah. Well, they're not my neighbors. See, technically the word neighbor means neighbor. <laughs> White man live next door to you. Is he your neighbor? Well, spiritually. He... Boy, do he live across the street? Is he next door? Does he come out? Does he wave at you? Do you see him? <laughs> see, but in the spirit. In the He's your neighbor. You need to watch Mr. Rogers. He'll teach you what a neighbor is. It's so crazy. You know, a white man live next door. And you ask a Hebrew, is, is that your neighbor? And they pull out a concordance. Well, see, let's, let's, let's look through this, these words right here. And, 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 what? You can't answer the question? Well, no, no, but here's a phone number. See, if you call this guy, he'll tell you. He'll... Call this guy. So when you stand before the Lord and God said, now, what have you done? <laughs> call this guy, Lord. He, here's his number. This is the dude that put the biscuit in my mouth. Let me They claim they are gods but hate their neighbors. They believe they are with God but shun his earthly authorities and chosen leaders. So is anybody chosen other than the black folks? They are extremely hurt by the devil. 
but taking it out on God and his church. Can I keep preaching? Yes. This cannot, look at somebody and say, this cannot be. Yes. Look at the other person and say, this cannot be. Yes. Look at that hidden Hebrew that we all know is in here and tell him, <laughs> this cannot be, bro. When the devil hurts you, don't blame God. Look at somebody say, when the devil hurts you, don't blame God. Make sure you are not taking out your anger, disappointment, pain, and trauma on God and his earthly representatives. No one is perfect, and we all make mistakes. You've hurt people you don't even know you've hurt. We all make mistakes. No one is perfect. But gifts and callings of God are without repentance. To ensure that man can qualify to be his messengers. <laughs> you know, we don't like that scripture. Yeah, gifts and callings are without repentance. God couldn't make, couldn't make them contingent upon behavior. Or nobody would qualify. Forgive, let go, and remove the hurt that the devil caused, and trust in God's process again. His, how many of you know God has a process? God got a process for everybody. He got a process for the pastor, the musicians. He got a process for the praise leader. Every, he's processing all of us to get us to the place where we're supposed to be. Since it was the devil that hurt you, get him back by forgiving and being fully reconciled to God by reconciling with his church. Yeah. Oh, this was a good message to me. Man, oh man. Mm -hmm. James 3 and 14 says, but if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and make sure you do not lie against the truth. It says lie not against the truth. What does it mean by that? You can get so angry that you begin to cause, call the truth a lie because you're mad at it. Yeah. <laughs> Folks done got mad at me. Now, the message of the truth behind hip hop they on the videos, cheering and, yeah, woo, man, you better, oh, woo, he preaching, hey. <laughs> and through bitter envy and strife, they mad, and now I'm a false prophet and all of that that they was jumping to is false. That's what lying against the truth is. Yeah. You can be so angry and blinded by your anger that the, that the truth becomes a lie to you. I know I just preached. The, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but it's earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is what? And, but the wisdom that is from above is first what? pure then what that's how you know you are walking lie because you don't have peace with anybody <laughs> you can't even discuss anything peaceably but the wisdom from above is pure then peaceable then it's what gentle it don't dog folks out and easy to be entreated Full of what? Mercy. You can't have mercy on another color? Then your wisdom is not from above. <laughs> you can't have mercy on somebody that hurt you or somebody that... Man, your wisdom's not from above. Because the wisdom from above is full of mercy and what? Good what? Fruits. Everybody that talked to you is possessed by the devil now. Those aren't good fruits. Without partiality. And without what? Hypocrisy. 
That means you mean what you're saying. You're not just saying it for your own agenda. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that what? Make peace. Everyone stand to your feet. Don't be mad at God. God didn't make you broke. He didn't take your job from you. God didn't cause your divorce. God didn't cause your children to act a fool. God didn't put you in jail. Amen. God didn't make you beat that person up, get that felony, whatever you got. God didn't do any of that. God didn't do any of that. He didn't hurt your house. He didn't hurt you. You weren't hurt by God. What was done to you was the devil. The devil did it. Now we're soldiers in the same army in here. So we want to defend those that have been hurt by the devil. We want to make sure you're good, but do not blame God. So I want to pray for you. If that has happened to you, you've been hurt and you started seeing things the wrong way or whatever, we want to pray for you and make sure you good with God. God loves you. I don't care what happened. Man, if you were young and your parents were supposed to be Christians and they mistreated you or you saw things or they divorced and that hurt you or whatever, that will set up in your heart as, a, as, as just a trauma or, or traumatic situation that will cause you to even be afraid of marriage. The devil will use anything. So we're going to pray for that right now. Anybody, church hurt from an old church, whatever's in you, whatever, we're going to pray against it right now. Whoever you are, just come on up. We're going to trust and believe God. Anybody, anybody, whatever happened to you, whatever somebody said, did, whatever, let's be free. This is church. We're going to be free from it. Come on. Letting this go, I'm leaving that at the old building. Letting this go, I'm leaving that in that old relationship. Letting this go, I'm leaving that somewhere else. Not taking that any further. Not taking it any further. Nothing is going to stand in the way of me and what God has for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, oh. Anyone else? Come on. I can't wait to pray against this. Amen. People do stuff in church that will hurt you try to traumatize you so that you will look at church differently I've had all kinds of stuff happen to me in church but I've had to forgive those people I had to forgive those pastors forgive whatever happened and I had to move on so I could have peace and so my children would grow up with a respect for God's church the church of the living God the pillar and the ground of the truth hallelujah anyone else everyone just bow your heads father God we just thank you Lord God you know us you know our hearts you know our intent you know our motives God you know everything that's going on in our minds you know everything that's going on in our hearts father God you know what was said to us what was done to us you know how the devil used that person to hurt us, to scar us, that person to discourage us, that person to tear us down, that person to take jabs at us, that person to make us even have a fear of fellowship, make us inclusionist and, or make us just off to ourselves, Father God, reclusive, make us just stick to ourselves and we don't trust anybody with our heart. We don't get close to anybody. We have a standoffish spirit because we see in our minds what was said to us what they told us what they did to us but father you brought this message today to bring freedom to us right now you brought this message today so we can let this go once and for all we are tired of this hindering our progress tired of it hindering father god our relationships tired of it hindering father god our lives so right now, in the name of Jesus, everyone lift your hands that came up here. In the name of Jesus, Father God, break it right now. All hurt, all church hurt, any hurt that came from the church, that came from Christians, that came from believers, whether they intended to do it, whether they didn't intend to do it, however it went down, their words, their gossip, their slander, however it went down, they talked about you, they talked about your family, they talked about your mother, your father, your upbringing, however it went down, Father God, we will not allow it to stop us. 
Father God, we will not allow it to hinder us because it wasn't you, God. It was the devil. So God, bring our respect for your church back. Bring a respect for your church, for your pastors, for your leaders, for your elders, for your deacons, for the ushers, for the musicians. Father God, the church that you crafted for us to come together and fellowship. Give us a healthy respect and honor for leaders and authority, God. And take away, Father God, take away everything that the enemy planted there. In the name of Jesus. So that we will be free to worship free to fellowship free to build relationships free father god to get to know people free to trust people with our heart trust people and their intentions father god free us right now in the name of jesus we pray and we give you the glory and the honor and we thank you for this message in jesus name amen hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now hug somebody and say, I'm not mad at God. I'm mad at the devil. Say, the devil is the one that hurt me. The devil is the one that hurt me. But thank God for his truth. Thank God for his truth. Hallelujah. 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 Thank God for his truth. Thank God for his truth. Don't y'all love the truth of the word? Aren't you glad you can come to a place and experience God's truth? Uncut, unedited, no selfish motive. Hallelujah. I thank God for his truth. Amen. Thank God for his truth. Amen.